jet ski. Okay. From Chicago to New Orleans. A goat and two chickens for a family in Africa can completely change their life. It gives them milk to drink and butter and cheese and they can sell or eat the eggs. It kind of creates a renewable resource and actually creates a local economy. The best dressed jet skier on the planet. <laughs> Have a good time, kid. Thank you. Let's recap. It's day one of my trip. I've done some mildly condescending TV news. Very fun. I've auctioned off the rights to Chris and my jet skis. So we got the HMS Rebecca O'Malley and the HMS Kill Rockstars. And then, 0 0.05 miles into the 1,000 mile trip, and we hit a lock! And we're stuck for three hours. We are seriously fucked. At this rate, we'll get to New Orleans in like two and a half a year, so. Surprise! It is a bad idea to travel industrial waterways on a vehicle primarily intended for divorced dads to get drunk on while still seeming cool to their kids. We're good. We're back on the road! choice for a Friday, guys. I love the way you look, Chicago. I love the way you guys have lunch. Nobody has lunch like Chicago. I'm Kurt Brownholer. I'm jet skiing from Chicago to New Orleans. You're seeing the beginning of my trip. And we're sending 500 goats and 1,000 chickens to Africa. Thank you so much for your support. I just peed. I'm peeing right now. Right now. Guys, I put a hat on. Safety first! Start point, ground zero. Not in the 9-11 sense, but just in the sense that I'm beginning here. Some say the mayor used to live in that house on top of this bridge because he was a hermit and he loved bridges. Roust him out! My dude's hot dogging. This is some classic brown oil right here. Classic hot dogging. Now, the Chicago River connects to the Illinois River. Now, you've seen the Chicago River. It's pretty, they make it green for St. Patrick's Day. Once you get out of Chicago, guys, very quickly it becomes an industrial wasteland. Well, there's a homeless man living in a tent. Like as soon as the buildings like fall away, it just goes from fields to gravel pits to junkyards to sand pits and back to junkyards again. I'm not gonna lie, shit got real depressing real fast. And I'm the one who's on the fun jet ski. My crew is back on the boat and I can totally tell they already hate me for bringing them here. So I decided I'm gonna rally everybody and get them excited by giving Lil Minnow a ride on the jet ski. Lil Minnow. Watch a ride with me. Okay. Let's do it together. Together forever. You ready to lose your virginity? Yeah. Here we are. The great sand pits of southern Illinois. Sand, 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 sand. The water is warm. That's just the chemicals burning your skin. Man, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So that's what I told my stepdad. I don't need to necessarily go to a four-year university. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe I ride the rails for a while. Maybe I take up commercial fishing. I don't know. situation right now. I'm just trying not to kill it, but we've been running it all day here, so. Yeah, no gas, we just died. So we're in the middle of the river. Then about five miles outside of Chicago, our chase boat runs out of gas. <laughs> and like when a car runs out of gas, it just comes to a stop. 
but when a boat runs out of gas, it's just a fucking free-for-all. It just continues to go where you don't want it to go. Where is this magical uh, gas station that was supposed to be a fucking mile away when we started? Uh, they were closed. I mean, I know I didn't prepare for this, but did no one else prepare for this journey? All right. It's bullshit. I'll be honest, I end up yelling at the Marine crew, like a real asshole, guys. It's not one of my finer moments, all right? I'm mad at myself. I mean, I'm also mad at the Marine crew, because fucking, you ran out of gas, motherfuckers. Get your shit together. But I'm the one who put us all in this fucking situation to begin with, and now I'm watching my whole plan just crumble before my eyes, and it's only been five hours. Everybody might want to put on a life jacket. Good idea. Why do we need to put on life jackets? In case there's an accident. We have no control. We are floating out here, and it's not a good thing to be floating. This is, uh, this might be it. As long as we don't see a big barge coming at us, oh, yeah. we're good. Sorry, Africa.